Friends, welcome to Letham St Mark's Church on Easter Day, the day when we remember that God has raised his son back to life, accepting his sacrifice from Good Friday and not leaving him in the grave, but raising him to life to show to us that all that Jesus had accomplished was received by God as his offering on our behalf. It is a wonderful day. And so may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you as we gather in our homes to worship together. I hope that you'll use the different songs that the Praise Band have also been putting on the Facebook page to help us in our worship. But for this podcast, we want to have prayer, we want to read the Word of God and have a reflection upon what this Easter Sunday means for us today in 2020. So friends, let's do that together. Let's join our hearts together in prayer, shall we pray? Father in heaven, as we gather in our homes and as we gather in different places, we give thanks to you today for the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we have gone through the agony of Holy Week, the ecstasy and the agony from Palm Sunday to Easter Friday to Good Friday. We have seen the crowds receive him and then reject him. We have listened to those who shouted hallelujah and then those who cried out, crucify him. Lord, for all of that, our Lord and Saviour has gone through for us. And we are grateful today that even as we have agonised over Good Friday and the cross, so you have been so pleased with what Jesus has done that on this day we remember that he has conquered death and that the tomb is empty. Lord, may the Easter message sink deeply into our hearts and minds and flow from us to be the hope for everyone, not just for Christians. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins this day, we pray, of thought and deed. And walk with us, we pray, whether we are in the valley of death or whether we are in the heights of ecstasy of life. God, be our saviour and our light this day, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, I'd like to read to you from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28. It says this, after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and they became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now, I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Shalom, greetings, he said. They came to him. They clasped his feet and they worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Amen. Thanks be to God for this reading from his word. Easter Sunday the day that brings so much hope to the world, the day that sends a message that even in the darkest of times, there is absolute light. And that light is our hope, not just for today, but for all days. There's a song that we sing often in church called, God Sent His Son, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. It's a wonderful reality and something that perhaps we take for granted as Christians, but remembering there's a world out there that is looking for hope, is looking for something, is looking for that rock upon which to build their lives. Interestingly enough, as we look at the story as was read from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, there was so much controversy, and still is to a certain extent today, around the resurrection. You see, the resurrection is not just part of the story. It's the hub of the story. It's the culmination of everything that the gospel stands for and means. And therefore, without it, 
the gospel falls apart. But with it, it is that hub that holds everything together. You know, the internet is a brilliant thing. We can do so much good with it and through it. We can meet up with friends. We can get in contact with people we haven't spoken to for years. We can gather all sorts of informations. You know, my library has really been reduced to simply checking the internet and using that as a global cyber library rather than having hard books all over the house. But the other side of the internet, of course, is that it can be an agent of all sorts of other sorts of things. You know, often we think that what we read on the internet is accurate and true, but sometimes it's just not. People maliciously use it to spread all sorts of lies and gossip. We call it fake news. Now, fake news is nothing new, of course. It's been about really since the time that humanity walked the earth at first. But because of the internet, it has a, a greater speed and reach than any time before this. And so good news has got great reach, but also fake news has that ability to do the same. Back in the time when they were trying to work out what was happening on that Easter Sunday, immediately, immediately, fake news about what had happened to Jesus started to circulate around Jerusalem. It was important for the Jewish authorities and for the Romans to disprove the resurrection. It was important for them to say it was just a big lie. It never actually happened. Now, I think this is hugely important. I think it is the whole credibility of the Christian faith through this part of the narrative of the story. You see, for many people, they just like the morality of Christian stuff, which is okay. Some people like it because of the fellowship and the coming together. Others for architecture, others for the rituals and all of that, which in themselves do no harm and are okay. But they are not the story. They are not the hub of what Christianity is truly about. The hub of that is the resurrection of Jesus. So much so that the Apostle Paul, who at this point was a Jew, was a Pharisee, learning his trade about becoming a Jewish religious lawyer. Later on, his life would be radically changed as he was trying to persecute Christians. He met the risen Jesus. Jesus came to him and turned his life around on the Damascus Road. So Paul knew more than anyone else the importance of the resurrection. And he would say that we as a people are to be pitied. We are to be the ones that are cast aside further than anyone else if the resurrection is not true. Because he saw it for what it was, the hub of everything that we believe. You see, the resurrection tells us and undoes at the same time, tells us of what lies ahead and undoes what was already done before we were born. Back to creation, back to the time when Adam first walked to earth, when the first men and women were there and they deliberately disobeyed God. They brought death, they brought pain, they brought suffering into our world. And that has been with us and is still with us until the end of time. But the hope of the gospel is that through the resurrection, death, which is the result of sin, has been defeated. Now, I've never met anyone who is not frightened or scared of death or dying. The prospect is not something really that any of us truly look forward to. And yet through the resurrection of Jesus, the Apostle Paul writes again that it's like being stung with this enormous sting that takes away all our sense of feeling human. It injects us with a poison and it's a horrible thing. Yet because of Jesus, he has taken the sting out of that. God has removed the sting of death. It has no power because the sting has been removed and the healing can come. It is our hope, friends. It is our hope that as we look around and as we see all the different challenges facing us today, that we rest on what God has done for us and what God shares with us. You know, God does love the world so much that he has given his only son, that through our faith in him, we shall not perish, but have eternal life. 
death and dying are not a great prospect for anyone. No one really truly looks forward to it. But yet, friends, what lies beyond that? What lies beyond that is the hope, not of some fluffy cloud experience of heaven, but of eternity spent in the presence of God, where there is no more dying, no more crying, where God himself will take his own handkerchief out, it says, well, sort of says that, and wipe our tears away, where eternal life with God in Jesus Christ is a reality, where there is perfection, where Eden is restored, and where we are called to be with him forever. It's a marvellous day, a day of hope, a day of celebration, a day when we say that death has been defeated. It's not fake news, it is real news. Too many lives have been changed for it to be untrue. My life, maybe your life too, by meeting the risen Christ. Friends, his love and his arms are open for us. Whatever stage or age we are in life, it is never too late to ask God to be that one who will take away the fear of death by becoming to us our God and our Saviour. And for us, as we go forward in faith, we know that regardless of what tomorrow may bring, we are kept in the everlasting arms of our Saviour Jesus Christ. He died, but he rose again. And to him be all praise and glory this day, both now and forevermore. Let us pray. Lord God, we give thanks to you today for the resurrection, for the truth of the resurrection, for the fact that all fake news in the light of this truth is simply washed away. So Lord, come to us again, we pray. May the power of your resurrection be at work within our hearts and minds. Develop within us the character of Jesus Christ as we serve our neighbour and as we pray for those who serve us. Giving thanks to you for all frontline workers, for all who are working so strenuously and with such great vigour in keeping our country and our world well. For politicians, for retail workers, for support workers, for those who are working in retirement homes, as carers for those who are receiving care. Lord, have mercy, we pray upon them. We bless and praise you and ask that for whatever our needs are this day, you would hear our prayers and answer our prayers accordingly, O God. But above all, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep guard over our hearts and minds in the love and the knowledge of him, both now and forevermore. And so, friends, may you have a peaceful, a safe week. Stay at home, do whatever it is you have to do, but look after yourselves, look after others. Obey the rules, they're there for everyone's benefit. And before long, this will be behind us. And before we know it, life will not be the same. It will be different, but we will find a different normality after lockdown. God bless you, and may the Lord be with you in these days.